Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board and I am broadcasting live from my studio down here on the south coast of the UK in Dorset. If this is your first time for Technique Tuesday, you are very, very welcome indeed. We're halfway through a project, but I'm going to talk more about that in a second. Now, we have uh, lots of different audiences that tune in to Technique Tuesday. So some of you will be watching live via the Learning to Paint with Alison Seaboard Facebook page. Some of you will be watching via Catch Up. Some of you might be watching on YouTube, but I'm guessing that that the majority of you will be watching through my blog. So that's www.learningtopaint.co.uk. No matter how you're watching or where you are watching from, you are all very welcome. Now I'm going to be referring to uh, the live audience that I have during this broadcast. And what happens is that people comment uh, on Facebook as the broadcast goes out. And we have a competition every week to see who can be the first person to commentate. To commentate? To comment, even. I've lost the plot. I've, I, there was a plot, I've lost it. Um, now, the great news this morning that the winner of the first person to comment uh, in the live broadcast today is our very own moderator, is the lovely, gorgeous D. Good morning, D. Who else have we got in the room? Uh, we've got Heather, Anne, Ali, Martina. Martina is saying that it's very wet, where she is very wet and horrible and blustery here too. Uh, Linda, good morning. Sue, as <laughs> Sue is saying it's very uh, dry in Scotland. My pronunciation is dreadful, but I know exactly what you mean. Uh, Anne B is multitasking and saying that she's putting ingredients in the bread maker. Share it round, Anne. I could have done with that this morning. Thea, good morning. Joe, <laughs> Fran. Uh, Fran is saying she can watch live today. That's very good news. I know some of you do slightly do it on the sly while you're at work. Fran. Uh, Jane, Anita is in the room, my mum, Liz is in the room, Rosie is saying it's sunny in France and long may it last, yes, wishing you long sunny days ahead Rosie, Joe, Linda P, uh, Dre Dre uh, Jane you're going to have to give me a uh, lesson in how to pronounce that in Scottish and Paula is in the room, there's lots of you tuning in this morning, you are all very welcome indeed. So we are halfway through our artistic intuition project this morning. It started with a found poem. It then went to a whole load of uh, experiments with textures and what I'm going to do is catch you up on all the things that we have been doing. So uh, let's firstly take you to the website so that you can see where to find all of the previous broadcasts and some of the bits of information that might be useful to you. So here is the website. And uh, no matter how you access it, whether it is on a tablet or a desktop or a smartphone, you will see uh, a menu in the top right hand corner. Sometimes it's next to that little shopping cart symbol that's there, but it's under free resources and you click on Technique Tuesday and there is the blog. It might look a bit different depending on your device. Now that one which doesn't have an image at the top is today's blog because I try to write the blogs before I do the broadcast so that all the information is there for you straight away. And here we have it kind of working. So it works backwards, the blog. There's all sorts of things there that you can enjoy. There's our B project that we did. Uh, that was a recorded Technique Tuesday that I did. Look at the beautiful Dora popping up there. But so for example, if you go to read more, on the blog, there is uh, the last Technique Tuesday that I did with the broadcast, so you can always watch them back again. And the other thing that I've done is I've included uh, links to some of the products that I have used. And uh, also on today's, although the video isn't there yet, you will see this. So here it goes, Artistic Intuition Part 3. No idea where this is heading. We'll talk more about that in a second. And uh, there is the blank broadcast. I will upload it as soon as this is finished. And there are the links to some of the products that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using System 3 acrylic paints, SAA oil and acrylic brushes, and a tear off palette. So hopefully that gives you uh, some idea as to uh, where you can find the information and how you can go about accessing it. Right, who else is in the room? Christine is saying it's rainy in Birmingham. 
sad face. Uh, Sue, good morning. Um, and uh, Liz and Ali are talking about ballet. It is World Ballet Day today, just in case you didn't know. Uh, Google World Ballet Day and you'll see a whole, if ballet is something that interests you, you know that it is a subject uh, very close to my heart indeed. So if you're interested in any of that, go and watch some of the company classes and some of the rehearsals that are there. I'm supposed to be working today, but I might have to take a little bit of time out to maybe watch things like the Royal Ballet do their um, class this morning. It's too much fun to watch. Right, let's catch you up on what we've been doing. Here is our canvas so far. I'm just going to zoom out a tiny, tiny touch. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. That's better. So this was a square canvas, so it's a box canvas that, uh, so let's just show you the back of it so you can understand how it's constructed. A wooden frame with canvas stretched over the top of it. Um, like I said, the first place that we started was a found poem. So uh, you can go back and look at the blog as to the things that I did to get that and to, as that was a source of inspiration. And we were also looking at including textures. There's all sorts of other things are built up on here. If you are an avid Technique Tuesday uh, viewer, then you might notice that there's a few differences to when you saw this last. It is a much thicker layer of texture than I had on before. If I try to get that in uh, some sort of raking light, let's see, yeah, there we go, that's better. So you can see actually how much has been built up on this surface. I was trying to get these little mirror tiles really kind of um, smoother into the surface, but there's still something I've got to do to those. So you can see I've got uh, some B imagery here. We've got a bit of texture with some stencils going on. There's all sorts of things going on on this surface and the great news is that i have absolutely no idea where this is going i'm working very intuitively very instinctively i'm basically kind of chucking things at it and seeing if it works now one thing i did want to do to this before we do uh, anything else by applying paint to it today i wanted to expose some of these mirror tiles a little bit more and so to do this, where I put the watercolour ground and the gesso and things on, it sort of obliterated them a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the edge of my palette knife to expose some of the edges. I don't want to expose all of them. Don't want to expose all of them, just want to expose some of them. You can also do this with a piece of wet and dry sandpaper. Uh, ordinary sandpaper but the reason I have chosen to use a palette knife is because when you are running sandpaper over glass it makes my teeth go all funny <laughs> so we're not doing that this morning uh, who's just popped into the room Hilary P good morning and good morning to Jill to Jill it's been a long time since I've seen you I do hope that you and your family are all okay so uh, working out I don't want to expose all of them again I just want to expose a few of them down here. So some of them are covered in texture. Some of them you can see all of the mirror tile. Some of them are just sort of half obliterated. So we've got that going on down here. And then we've got some of them up here too. I'm still not entirely convinced that I like all of these. It has to be said. But you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? Um, this, uh, the inspiration for all of this, just in case you are joining us and didn't manage to get to see any of the other broadcasts yet then this is all inspired by my journey around the country a few weeks ago to go and follow my favorite band who are elbow and uh, some of the friendships that i made on that trip and some of the music that i listened to so uh this is all kind of inspired by those things i know that some of those people are currently in the room so uh, this one is a, a little bit for you guys as well now that i've done that i want to start putting some acrylic paint on now, I, like I said, I don't know where I'm going with this and I don't know how I'm going to interpret it. All I'm doing is kind of making decisions based on how I feel at the time of painting. So I decided I wanted to work in acrylic. I don't work in acrylic as often I, as I would like to, but I'm really trying to get to grips with my acrylic skills at the moment. So that was the main reason for going for it. And whilst I don't know what I'm going to paint and how I'm going to paint it, I have pulled some acrylics out of my acrylic box 
as a kind of place to start. Now we all have a default colour palette, don't we? And here is my default colour palette. You'll see these colours pop up an awful lot in my work. So we have a System 3 brand of acrylic paints. They are my favourite brand of acrylics. Um, I personally think they are one of the best brands out there because they are not only very economical to buy, but they have a very good quality in their coverage. So we were doing an acrylic workshop uh, Saturday just gone, and those people who hadn't uh, tackled acrylics before were having a go with some of my System 3 paints, and they were saying that the difference between their cheap acrylic paints and these ones which are still terribly affordable was really quite marked. So. These are the System 3. This is not the heavy body. System 3 do two versions of it, made by De La Rani. Um, They do a heavy body version, which is quite thick and unctuous. This one is a little bit, it flows a bit better. And I've got my default setting here. Uh, you can see, actually, I'm modelling all three colours this morning. So I've got me, got me purple on, I've got me Prussian blue on my nails, and i got a bit of silver as well. Now, Rosie has just made a very good point. Um, she's saying, as opposed to watercolour, I believe acrylic dries slightly darker. Yeah, acrylic can colour shift, um, but System 3 is a pretty good uh, colour in uh, brand in terms of colour shift. It does alter a little bit. I think mostly I would say that it actually alters from going very glossy when it's wet to slightly matte. So I think that's what alters your appearance in colour. I've gone back to my default palette of colours simply because uh, I don't know where it is I'm going with this, so I'm using my safety net of colours. So I've got those three, so I've got the velvet purple, the Prussian blue and silver. Got my little silver sparkly nails going on today. So let's pop those uh, just to one side temporarily. And then I've got three other colours as well. And I wanted to talk to you about these today. These are three variations of white. So we have titanium white, which is a bit of a standard white. It's very white, which is a crazy conversation to have, isn't it? It's a white white. <laughs> um, we also have zinc mixing white and it's kind of given away its top job. It is for mixing. It's for making paler tones of something rather than being a really strong white on its own, which is what titanium is. So you've got titanium white, which is white. You've got zinc mixing white, which is not the greatest white on its own. It's much more designed to make paler tones out of everything else. And then you have this rather interesting anomaly, which is buff titanium. Now, buff titanium is a pretty much as it describes. It is a, a kind of creamy, very pale straw colour. And I quite like it because uh, experience tells me that buff titanium, violet and Prussian blue go together very well indeed. And because I am effectively going to be slapping colour on this today and really not thinking it, overthinking it too much, I thought what I would do is I'd have those three whites there so that I can uh, make some pick and mix colours on my palette, which I'm going to do in a minute. And we can throw some colour on this. And uh, that's going to pretty, pretty much be it for today because I think I've got an idea as to what I'm going to do with this next week, but I don't want to make too many decisions. Now, the way that I'm going to organise my palette is I have one of these. This is a tear-off palette. This is made by Frisk. I have put the link to this tear-off palette on the blog on my website. Now, the reason I prefer tear-off palettes to anything else, I can never tell how long I'm going to be able to work on a project. So you can get things called stay wet palettes, which keep your colour moist for up to two weeks. Now, um, anybody that knows me, knows my work, knows that I might work on a painting for three or four days straight, or I might abandon it for six months. So I don't particularly uh, need the use of a stay wet palette because by the time I've returned to my colours, they're probably going to go off. So what I do is go for a tear off palette. You can also use paper plates, that kind of thing. I just like the large areas. It's about A4, I think. Yes, nine by 12 uh, inches, so a tiny, tiny smidgen larger than A4. And what you do, you squeeze your colours out, and when you're done, you tear that top one off and you throw it away. So let's fold that back. You can see uh, where I was using it at the weekend. Um, you can tear that sheet off. I tend to just uh, leave it in the palette, and I'm going to pop it down here. Let's move my canvas 
over to the left a little bit so that we can get more of the palette in shot. And I've got my pot of water up here. Um, one quick word as well about the brushes that I'm using. I'm using a very old brush. I genuinely have no idea where this came from. I have a feeling I purchased this when mum, dad and I had our art material shop. It might have even been a sample. If mum is in the room and is still watching, uh, she might be able to enlighten. But you can see how well loved it is. Paint all falling off the handles. Um, it's not a particularly posh one. It looks a bit like a decorating brush. But one of the reasons I like it is because it isn't as thick as a normal decorating brush. It's quite thin. But um, I can't put a link to this because it is donkey's years old. And so, um, but it is my favourite background <laughs> um, uh, painting brush. So I, I've got that one. But I also have my much better quality brush. So this is one of the SAA's acrylic and oil um, uh, painting brushes. These are nylon. This is a flat, this is size 16, and what I'm gonna be able to do is uh, to use it in kind of more refined areas. This is for slapping it on, this is for refining it. Again, you can see this is a very well-loved brush, okay? Um, <laughs> Anne B is saying the ingredients are in the bread maker, now you have my undivided attention. And my mum is saying that uh, she can't remember where that brush came from either. I seem to remember mum, sorry to just uh, spend five minutes talking to my mum, bear with us everybody. I seem to remember this was a, a sample brush from somewhere, but it is fabulous brush. Again, you can see not very well looked after, very well loved. So I'm going to put those to one side. i got a bit of kitchen roll just to my left as well. So let's squeeze a few colours out so that we've got a, a little pick and mix uh, palette going on. So I'm going to start with my uh, titanium white. So let's put a dollop of that out. Not entirely sure I know even how much paint I'm going to need today. Not sure about that at all. There's the zinc mixing white. Um, I do like, one of the reasons I like these tubes as well, just in case you're wondering why I go for these. If um, the, if, if you know of, or, like an ordinary paint tube with one of those little tiny lids, I struggle to get those lids to undo. I struggle to get hold of them. As you can see, acrylic paint kind of dries around the, the head. These have got little flip lids, which are very easy to do, or if you want more of it, they are much easier to unscrew. So if you do have a problem with your hands or arthritis or grip or any of those kind of things, this is the um, System 3 uh, 59 milliliter tubes. And I think they're much easier to do. I would know an awful lot of people in their studios kind of hang them up or bulldog clip the top of them as well so that they can see them. I'm not that organized, I throw them all in a box. So that was my zinc mixing white. Then I've got a bit of my uh, buff titanium. Oh, people sharing their stories about what palettes they use. What is Jill saying? Because Jill uses an awful lot of acrylics. I use a baking tray with wet kitchen roll and baking paper as a wet palette. Yes, absolutely. There are all kind of manner of ways around using a stay wet palette. Um, I just uh, probably am not going to return to this for well over a week. So I'm going to use my colour and, and crack on with it really. So I've got my titanium white, my zinc white, my buff titanium. Uh, here's a bit of silver because why wouldn't you? Um, I've got a bit of a, a gloopy top to this. So let's uh, just give this a bit of a clean. There we go. Uh, snap the lid back on. And then our kind of two feature colours really. Sorry, I keep getting my head in shot. Uh, my camera's not set up as much as I as good as I would like it to be today. Um, so we've got uh, the velvet purple. What a delicious colour that is. And we've got good old Prussian blue, one of my favourites. So let's get that squeezed out and in. Don't think I'm going to... I have a feeling that all of those combined is going to be plenty of paint. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with uh, this is I'm going to do a scumbling technique. And effectively, what that means is that I'm going to push colour all the way over the top of it, really kind of just working with it intuitively, not, do, not thinking too hard about it, to give it a background layer, and we'll see where it goes, shall we? Now, I don't want to make my colour particularly wet. I don't need it to be runny today so all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my brush into the water because yes I haven't cleaned it since I used it on Saturday 
Oh dear Ali. <laughs> One day I'll be rich and famous enough to have a studio assistant. They can clean all my brushes for me. Wouldn't that be lovely? Um, any volunteers out there for the job? No? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the moisture out of my brush. Why am I taking the moisture out of my brush? Because I don't want it to be sloppy. I don't want it to kind of be running or too thin. I just want my brush to be damp enough so that I can move the paint around. Round. and I'm going to start off with a little bit of that titanium white and here goes we're going to slap it on now I know that you're thinking to yourself why on earth Ali are you painting something that is already white with white paint I'm doing it lovely people because I want that white to be a kind of conduit for the other colors that I'm going to put on in a minute I'm putting it on at random um, I'm going to put a little bit of the zinc white. So the zinc white will have a slightly different effect on the colour. And you can probably see that I'm being quite brutal with it. This is not watercolour. This is not the kind of touch it on and leave it and hope that it does its own thing. You have to tell acrylic where you want it to go. So I've got a bit of tea white over there, a bit of titanium white there. Got a bit of zinc white there. Let's crack open the buff titanium. And that's already going into uh, the titanium white and making a lovely soft cream going on there. I know it's a little bit hard to see at the moment because I'm painting pale colours on a pale surface. But it will all come together, I promise. So let's go for a bit of buff titanium down there. Do I want that buff titanium anywhere else? I'm liking this colour. Let's put it up in the top corner as well. Now, I want it to cover the texture at the moment. Later on, there is uh, the possibility that I won't want it to cover the texture, that I will actually want the texture to interfere with the colour. But at the moment, I'm thinking to myself that I don't really want that to happen yet. So this is where you get an aching arm because you have to be brutal with it. But I'm getting so you can really see that texture coming through now, can't you, in that top corner. Let's go for some silver. You will also notice that I'm not washing my brush out in between. Uh, you could ask me if that's for very uh, good sound artistic reasons. And the answer is no, it's because I'm really lazy and I just want to get on with it. So we've got a bit of that silver going in. So I'm using the uh, bristles of that brush to really scumble in. Now, I've had to paint over my mirror tiles there. So either with my uh, bit of kitchen roll or much more constructively in with my finger, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna clear some of them. So I've got a nice kind of gray and a creamy thing going on, going on, going on. Uh, a bit more silver, maybe. Good morning, Tricia. Very lovely to have you here. Um, lots of you I haven't had an opportunity to catch up with recently, and I am missing you. But hopefully I'm, I'm back from a lot of my travels now, so I'll be able to uh, have a bit of extra time to catch up with you all. Right, so we've got those colours on. Now I'm going to start, I, I sort of, I don't know why... <laughs> I get the feeling that I want to add a bit of a sort of blast of colour in here. I don't know why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of that velvet purple and I'm going to add into it some of the zinc mixing white to get a kind of a luscious pale kind of, I don't know what colour that is, wisteria kind of colour going on. And I'm going to start scumbling some of that in. Now, this is where my second brush, that looks really bright in the camera. It's really not that bright at all. Let's tone down this camera. Bear with me ever so slightly. I'm going to just alter the colour on this so it doesn't look quite so glow in the dark. Let's just, oh, no, that's not good, is it? Let's make it a little bit more like it is. There we go. There we go. That's a bit better. So I'm going to take my second brush and while this paint is wet... I'm going to smudge the two together. So this is a really proper kind of scumbling technique that I've got going on. I don't want to add any more water to this because the danger is if I add any water to this, I'll actually blow a hole in it. What I can do if I want it to move a little bit more is add one of the other colors back into it. So it's like you're kind of smudging it with your finger. 
If you do actually prefer using your finger, there's absolutely no reason at all why you can't go back in and smudge it physically that way. But I know that there are some of you out there that absolutely hate getting your hands dirty. So let's do it the proper way with a brush. So you can also see that there's no kind of um, repetitious brush stroke. I am working my way, this is my uh, upper arm workout for the day. Now I've got to the B and it's hitting and missing a little bit. So I want to go back to the color. I, my brush has gone a little bit dry. So I'm gonna add a tiny touch of water back into it. There we go. Oh, let's do this brush actually. This has got more color on it over the top. Let's just go over the mirror tiles temporarily. We can always take them off with our finger. And then we'll go back to our scumbling. Uh, let's put a little bit of titanium white in there this time for a good old scumble. I'm not wild about the uh, texture of the canvas showing, so I am trying to get rid of that. But it's really quite physical and after a while, well even now, my arm is starting to ache a little bit. But what I'm getting is that lovely kind of nice, soft, diffused colour. Let's work it into the texture down here a little bit. Don't forget, I can always take that away with my hand, already covered in paint. My favourite state of being. And I'm getting the feeling, don't know why, getting the feeling that I need some of that lilac -y colour up here too. So if you get the feeling that something should be going on, put it in, put it in. I'm working so intuitively at the moment, I'm not really making any decisions, I'm not overthinking it, I'm not trying to work out where this is heading. This is a very abstract process and I know a lot of you out there say to me where on earth do you start with an abstract Ali how am I supposed to know what it is that you do with an abstract excuse me one second I'm just going to kill my mic because I need to have a cough there we go back in the room now this is one of the ways that you can start to put together an abstract just by working your way through a series of processes by going ooh I fancy doing this with it and do it and see if it works this is my way of putting an abstract together as, I, as you heard me say at the top of the demonstration today the reason that I've chosen these colors is because they are my sort of safety net color palette so that lilac is on there, quite liking that. I'm liking where it meets that buff titanium as well. What I might do is add a little bit more of that, a slightly stronger version of it down here in this bottom left-hand corner. So I get more of a kind of peachy transition between that lilac and the buff titanium. Let's get that in. Yes, my apologies for my voice and my coughing. Still not quite recovered from my hideous cold that I had, but it's all right, it's fine. It's only just a cough. Nothing more serious than that, I'm glad to say. So let's get that in. Nice warm colour going on down here now. Let's uh, pick up some more of that buff titanium. I'm not a big fan of yellow or kind of creamy colours as a rule, but I have to say with this uh, lilac -y colour, what I'm getting is a nice soft transitional colour. Now my brush has gone a bit too dry and a bit too stiff again. So into the water, just a tiny touch of water. You don't need to dunk the whole brush in. I've just dunked the kind of the first few millimetres in. And what I should get then is enough water to be able to move some of that stiff colour that I've got going on around. Say so liking that a lot, liking that a lot. Now, I kind of get the impression now that I need to be a bit braver with this and I need to work on this bottom right hand corner. I don't know why I'm getting the impression that I need some strength in here somewhere, some kind of darkness to offset these kind of lovely misty colours that I've got on. So I am going to go straight into the Prussian blue, which is a little bit daring, isn't it? Now, there is some buff titanium on my brush. 
there is a little bit of the velvet purple and there's a little bit of the zinc white in there too um, but it's kind of making quite a nice almost kind of borderline grey I'm a bit mad about this kind of blue at the moment I was at somebody's uh, house over the weekend and they got their doors painted in this kind of really delicious dark blue and I did fall in love with it a little bit so let's get some of this uh, dark going on and I realise that it's dark and I realise that some of you out there will be hyperventilating, I get that, but it's alright because we can blend it, we can scumble it across into that lilac, although actually, let's, my brush has gone a bit dry again, so let's, oh no that's too wet, did you see that went all sloppy and I didn't like it, I put too much water on there. So I'm going to take the, see look, blown a hole in it, you idiot, Ali. Oh dear, never mind, that was me not concentrating. But what it does do is show you what, show you what exactly what happens when you overdo the water content. That's okay, I think I've rescued it. Let's lighten the touch a little bit with our scumbling. Maybe I was scumbling a little bit too hard to do some dusting over the surface that's better Ooh, liking this now um, and then let's get that dark blue right down here in the corner over the top of those mirror tiles let's expose just a couple of them so that we get that little bit of light shining through so I'm being very kind of delicate with my touch over that that's working really well, isn't it? Liking that. This is all dried over here now. Never mind. Let's lighten up the pressure that I apply on my surface. Now I'm getting brush marks, which I don't want. Morning, Kathy. Um, so I'm going to go back into the kitchen roll. I can actually pick up a little bit of that moisture from the kitchen roll. And then if I go back and lightly dust my way over those brush marks that I don't like, then they go back to being misty again. I'm not after any kind of directional mark making in applying this colour. All I'm after at the moment is that kind of soft misty effect. Now let's get some of that blue in down here. Uh, don't like that, look at that. A horrible formal triangle. What am I thinking? That needs to get broken up. So let's push that colour up over into this side that's better I probably need to do some up there looking at it now let's get that uh, SAA acrylic brush in and let's start that needs to be really manhandled down at the bottom but then when it starts to hit that buff titanium lightening the pressure a little bit so my brush is going dry again I've got another triangle in there what's the matter with me today I'm gonna wash my brush out <laughs> wash my brush out take off the excess onto my kitchen roll and let's smudge that that's still a bit too wet I have to say sometimes doing it with your hand is better let's break this color up a little more that's better get rid of that ridiculous triangle what's the matter with me in triangles today perhaps I ought to channel that into a project I've obviously got a head for triangles today I mean, triangles compositionally are quite useful, but maybe not that formal. So let's soften this colour over to the left-hand side. I do, I have to say, this is one of my favourite techniques for acrylic scumbling. Um, I think it's just because I like to uh, take out any pent-up frustration on my paint. And you get this really lovely kind of soft, misty thing. Uh, Anne is saying that um, she thinks that me breaking up those strong geometric uh, shapes is a good idea. Good, I'm glad. Sometimes you make these decisions and you think, is it just me? Um, but obviously other people are liking it too. So I've got those little bits of mirror coming through. Um, Rosie is saying she likes my colour palette. Yes, well, you're never going to get an argument from me on that, Rosie, are you? They are just my default colours. And I think probably what you can't see, let's, um, let's see if we can be clever with the overhead camera today. And uh, let's see if we can uh, zoom in a little bit. No, let's go this way. Wrong way, Ali. So you should be able to see some of the softer shifts in colour 
from that Prussian blue to the buff titanium into that kind of lilac-y style colour. So yeah, working all right. It's uh, going okay. I still think I need something darker in there. That's what I'm thinking. I'm loving the colours, but my other default colour... Oh, maybe not that much, Ali. Oh, come on, camera, play. Do what I want you to do. There we go. Um, one of my other default colours that I use all the time is grey. So I might just reach down into my bag of colours in a second and add a bit of grey onto this too. What I'm doing is going back over, making sure that I have pushed the colour as far as I want it to go. So let's have a little bit of it going on up here. So that's, that's better. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Still a bit more. Maybe I need to strengthen this lilac, actually. Maybe if I put my brush... Oh, look at that. Put my uh, blue brush in with a bit of that violet. Maybe I'll get another interesting variation. Yes, I will. Look at that. Let's get that up in here, in this top corner. Getting that going on and scumbled away. So, brush is a bit dry. Take on a little bit of water to get that moving across. Now, some of my textures are starting to come through up here, which I'm not going to avoid. I'm going to allow them to do it this time. So, scumbled over that B shape that I've got. Don't forget, our um, found poem made reference to those Bs, and that's something else we need to work with. We need to work with that text a little bit more. Uh, Sue is saying not seeing the silver. The metallics are really uh, difficult to pick up on a camera. There is, you could, you should see a bit of a glint here and there. I might do more with metallics later on, Sue. Um, I think that maybe some metallics at the end might be quite interesting. I've got uh, a couple of products in my uh, bank of stuff that uh, I think might work really well, but who knows? Now I'm gonna bring that kind of lilac-y gray color down into this a little bit more. Now I know this seems like an awful lot of work for what is essentially a backdrop, but I'm sure you will agree that actually getting these colors on and getting them misty and breaking away from that white is actually uh, going to uh, make for a much more interesting background. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you'll hear a little bit of rustling going on. I'm going to see if I can find my tube of black, which I can. Ta -da! So here is my uh, System 3 black. This is Mars black. This is a lovely blue black. So I'm going to squeeze a tiny bit of it. I don't need an awful lot of that. And I think I want it to be darker down here in this bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to take a bit of that black. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to add it into my Prussian blue to deepen it. And then hopefully down here, what I'm going to get is a much richer, darker, kind of more grey version of the colour, which I am doing. Let's send it up either side of those mirror tiles. In fact, let's smudge it a little bit more over the surface. Get that in. Now it's starting to uh, drag a little bit. That's okay. I don't mind that. Worst case scenario with acrylic, of course, you can paint over the top of it. You just paint over the top of it. It's fine. So let's go in with my scumbling brush and let's get that blended in a little bit more. So it's turned it into a bit of a grey where it's uh, mixing with the background colours, but I don't dislike that. I've still got a strength of colour in that bottom right hand corner, liking that. Let's pick up a tiny bit of water, um, make sure that we don't have too much on the bristles, lighten our brush strokes a little bit to get the edges of it fuzzed out. So let's fuzz those over here. Let's pull it along a little bit. That B now really starting to stand out, which I like. Let's pull this across. Maybe we'll make it wistfully disappear up into that cream. But I don't want any brush stroke. 
strokes. Let's get my finger involved because the brush strokes are still a bit evident. Now the, uh, the surface of the canvas is coming through, which I don't like, but maybe I do something else with that in a minute. Hmm. Like the depth of color there. Like that's kind of richer and bolder. I think we probably need that gray elsewhere. Um, Rosie is asking, does brusho work with acrylics? Yes, it does. Yes, you can mix it in with acrylics. The trouble with using brusho on a canvas, of course, is that you've got to find some way of fixing it because it's not going to go behind glass. Um, but if you were working on paper, yes, you could absolutely use your brusho on top of this. Um, I'm working at the moment on some experiments of using um, brusho in other capacities. Um, but that is a bit of a long project, so I can't give you the definitive answers to that yet. Uh, so that's better. I kind of like that grey a little bit more. And I'm going to pull that grey. I like how I can kind of tint the edges of this. So let's start scumbling some of that colour over the top of the texture. So I don't know if you noticed, I changed the way that I'm gripping my brush. So instead of gripping it like this, I've put my hand over the top of it and now I'm using the flat of it a little bit more. What that does is break up the colour so that it's now just hitting the texture and not actually hitting the surface of the canvas. Really pleased with that. Very, very pleased with that. Let's um, let's just expose some of these mirror tiles again down here. This one's got a bit lost, isn't it? That's better. But I don't like the fact that that's too white. So let's take a bit of that grey and scumble that around and about. Pull that away. That's better. Kind of poking through a little bit more. And do you know what? I am not going to do an awful lot else to that because I am really happy with the way that has turned out. There's uh, lots of other things, lots of ideas popping in my head now to do with reintroducing the text possibly now on the canvas. That found poem that I constructed, but maybe I need to think about the ways that I can introduce that. I do have a bit of an idea, and yes, Anne, it's to do with uh, what you have just put, starting to look like a stormy sky. Now, I don't know if you remember, but the found poem that I was doing was called A Concert of Birds, and I'm thinking about a bird motif, maybe, somewhere in here. <coughs> Who knows? Who knows where this is going to go? But what that hopefully has done is show you how you can introduce a bit of scumbling to the background of an acrylic project and now I'm quite excited by this. When I looked at it this morning, I'm not going to lie to you, I was thinking to myself, oh, I don't really know where this is going. But sometimes you have to answer those questions through doing rather than hypothesizing about it. So rather than sitting there thinking, I could do this or this or this, sometimes you just got to pick up your paintbrush and uh, get it kind of onto the canvas, the paper, or whatever it is you're using, because sometimes those questions are easier to answer with a practical application rather than kind of sitting there trying to think about it. So I hope that has uh, interested you. I hope those techniques, even if you haven't had a go at acrylics before, are something that you are thinking to yourself, ooh, I fancy maybe you've got some acrylics lurking in the back of your cupboard somewhere. And you're thinking, do you know what? I'll crack open those tubes of acrylics and see if I can have a play with them. They are spectacularly versatile. I work in watercolour and gouache all the time just simply because that is where the majority of my work lies. But occasionally I get the pastels out or I get the acrylics out and I think, why haven't I used these more? And so sometimes one of the most inspirational things you can do is to kind of crack open some materials that you haven't used in a while and just get painting and not thinking about it too hard. Like I said, I'm kind of back now. I know uh, there was a bit of a hiatus last week because there was no Technique Tuesday, but I, I hope that this is made up for it. And uh, I will be back again next week with uh, pushing this project on a little bit further. 
Lots of you have got classes with me this week. We have an illustrated and illuminated letter workshop, an online workshop this Thursday. And then the All Aboard artists this week are tackling an orchid portrait in watercolour and gouache. So there's loads of things going on this week. But no matter whether you are tuning in for Technique Tuesday, joining me for a class or just browsing your way around my website, thank you very much for joining me indeed. You will take lots of care stay safe and start experimenting <laughs> take care everybody bye